All right, hello everybody. Um, thank you for choosing to wait with me for Vlad's talk, uh, I appreciate it. Um, but I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm here today to talk uh, a little bit about uh, decentralization and the Zcash Foundation. And for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Josh Cincinnati. Uh, you may have seen me on Twitter, you may have seen me write some rather sarcastic uh, white papers from time to time, um, but my main job and what I'm really focused on is helping to distribute power uh, in the Zcash protocol by running the Zcash Foundation. So there's a specter haunting cryptocurrencies. It's a specter of are we decentralized yet? Dot com. So this is uh, something from Jackson Palmer, uh, who has made uh, a rather uh, welcome addition to uh, the suite of data that we have on whether something should be decentralized or not. It actually was mentioned in another uh, Zcash Foundation board member's talk earlier. Um, and it's, it's a great piece of data. It tells us a lot about some of the features that we care about when it comes to decentralization. But it doesn't truly answer the question. It provides us with intuition and heuristics. Um, and it leads, I think, a lot of us to uh, realize that, like, that term is sort of overloaded. Uh, it's a common theme, it's not novel for me to say this, uh, but it does seem like it's a bit of a shibboleth in our community. Um, and so uh, I'm afraid that I kind of uh, did a bad job with my title. I made a bit of a misnomer. Um, in reality, uh, first off, like uh, an unscrambled egg is far more centralized than a scrambled one, because you can tell by the fork in the scrambled egg. Um, but Beyond that, it's really not about decentralization at all. It's about how we build a foundation um, for Zcash, the protocol, to grow and develop beyond the, confi excuse me, beyond the confines of an individual company. So the question that we have to ask ourselves is, what, what are we really after? Like, what's, what's the goal? Um, for Zcash, and in particular the Zcash Foundation, uh, we're dedicated to building internet payment and privacy infrastructure for the public good, uh, with a particular focus on the Zcash protocol. So what really matters to us is that mission. Um, matters very deeply to us at the foundation. And what that means strategically is that we're meant to be a check and balance on the Zcash company's power, uh, full stop. Uh, so earlier today uh, in Zuko's talk, I, I think he asked how many people were familiar with Zcash. I'm gonna do the same thing. How many people are familiar with Zcash? Hands raised, great. Okay, I'm not gonna go over the history then, uh, but how many people are familiar with the fact that there is a Zcash foundation and that it is a separate entity from the Zcash company? Okay, okay, we're doing okay, that's, that's not bad. There seems to be confusion around that generally, but uh, just to, to snapshot a little bit of that history, uh, after the Zcash company was founded and after the protocol was launched, uh, a segment of the founder's reward that was part of the uh, Zek distribution mechanism um, was granted by uh, some of the early, uh, earlier recipients and donated to the Zcash Foundation to create this, this nonprofit. Um, and the idea, of course, being that we would help distribute power. Um, so what does that mean for us starting out? Well, in 2017, we had some real low bar goals. Uh, no scandals, uh, and we need to disperse some exploratory grants. Uh, we only had, I, I was only part-time at the time, and the only part-time uh, employee there. Um, so that was like a, a reasonable set of goals for us back then. Uh, so then the question becomes, what was the Zcash company's uh, role and responsibility? And it was literally everything else. Literally everything that you can possibly imagine. Protocol development, uh, ecosystem partnership and growth. Uh, everything was on the company side. And in the middle, uh, we all had to confuse everyone by having Zcash in the foundation and company name. So, mission accomplished. But where, where do we need to go and where are we going from this year onward? So, so thankfully, we've expanded a bit on the foundation side and we're still in the process of uh, dispersing more grants to more ecosystem uh, participants. Uh, stay tuned for next week for our grant disbursements. Um, we've been experimenting with different governance structures, uh, incubating them, you might say. Uh, I apologize in advance, I'm a new dad, so the dad jokes are gonna come. Um, then the, uh, the other piece that, we're going, uh, that we're, we've been working on is actually uh, uh, hosting and supporting meetups and Zcon Zero. Uh, 
and also uh, something that's new that we're getting into is researching speculative cryptography that could benefit anyone that's working on, on privacy uh, in, in crypto systems. So the Zcash company has uh, still maintained a fair amount of control over Zcash D, a uh, super majority of protocol roadmap and feature development, uh, and also other sort of broader ecosystem development uh, and partnership opportunities. Uh, but in the middle, like, we're still helping to, we're both working on building open source libraries and wallets. Um, and the foundation is going to be taking a, a much more involved role in moving forward the protocol and, and feature development, particularly next year. Um, but why are those roles distributed the way they are? And what, what underlies them? What motivates them? What incentivizes them? We love incentives in cryptocurrencies. Um, in this case, uh, it's fairly well delineated thanks to uh, pretty, pretty stark corporate language and bylaws. Uh, in the Zcash company, there is a fiduciary duty to shareholders as a for-profit. And the foundation, it's a duty of care uh, as, as a nonprofit. The board is tasked with uh, making sure that the foundation is, is uh, still in line and guided toward their mission. Um, the other thing that's rather interesting that I think will uh, help to explain how even uh, foundations, in particular US-based nonprofits that pass the public uh, support test, uh, can be more, uh, can, can actually help encourage even more um, uh, disbursement of power, and I'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, but in the middle, we still have a common shared uh, ideology, which is do good by advancing privacy everywhere, particularly in payments uh, and internet payment infrastructure, uh, and to maintain and grow, uh, and grow Zcash. Uh, so why aren't there more stakeholders with more Venn diagrams? Well, the lazy answer is, this is the template I got from DevCon 4, and they didn't have three circles for me to use. Uh, but the actual answer is that in a lot of, uh, of political history in particular, there seems to be a stabilizing force around bimodal power distributions. Uh, you see it all the time. Um, for better or for worse, but in general, these, these sorts of distributions lead to stabler periods of development and, and, and more advancement in society. Uh, they're really powerful, particularly if you can design a bimodal power distribution uh, that has inherent gridlock, where you have common goals and aims, but there are places where you might not completely agree. Uh, and in those cases, it's not just powerful, but it's empowering. Uh, it enables participants who may not have a, a seat at the table at one particular structure, whether you're, if you're not an employee of the Zcash company, but maybe you're an open source contributor that can get a grant from the Zcash foundation. There are ways for the foundation to offer an opportunity to uh, effectively roll up uh, a lot of user voice and user will uh, into our organization and to be the counterbalance to the company. So there's obviously an American balance, uh, sort of bias here from, from me. Um, and in effect, if you wanted to make an American political analogy, if political discourse was civil and mutually respectful, um, you, could, uh, uh, you could say that Zcash company is, is much like the Senate uh, in that it's uh, a smaller, or well, in this case, bigger organization, but, uh, but definitely like, uh, uh, represents the smaller will of people, uh, whereas the House of Representatives represents the broader will of a community. But maybe a more familiar analogy for everyone whose cryptocurrency focus would suffice, which is you could view this as governance by two of two multi-sig. Um, and it's, it's actually, like a, I think, a real powerful me mental model for people who are familiar with multi-signature transactions, because that makes it very easy to understand like, how things can move forward, how protocols can be developed when you have these two parties that have similar aims, but maybe when there's conflict, there's actually no way for us to go forward in a particular feature or protocol development. Uh, and I also view this as being kind of a uh, a fundamental feature in a lot of these bimodal power distributions, and in fact, that you'll, you'll wind up seeing a lot of this behavior even represented within organizations themselves. But to be intellectually honest, it is still currently more like one of one, uh, because the Zcash company still controls uh, a great deal of protocol development uh, and, and support. But that's changing. Um, one of the things that I was really, really excited uh, about was the announcement earlier this week that we at the foundation are going to be partnering with Parity to develop a, uh, develop a completely independent uh, implementation uh, of, from the Zcash company 
uh, that will be under foundation control uh, after it's developed. Uh, beyond that, we've had these experiments that we've been incubating, uh, particularly our governance panel experiment was a really interesting way for us to try and get uh, uh, the voices of the community, but it had a lot of flaws. Uh, namely, there is sort of a necessary I identifying and uh, identifiable element to the people that were participating, and we as the foundation had to be arbiters of who could and couldn't participate. But thanks to, uh, thanks to Sapling hopefully becoming much more widely used and deployed, particularly shielded transactions, there's an opportunity for us to start to pull community members based off of the shielded transaction pool, where no one has to reveal their identity, but we can still still understand uh, in, in great detail the will of the community uh, through the people that actually hold uh, Zcash in, in the shielded pool. Uh, and that really excites me personally. I, I don't think that, as, as many have discussed, uh, in sort of pure um, like carbon vote style situations, uh, it's very difficult uh, to not have those systems be gamed. So I, I don't imagine that it will be the end all be all of what input we use as a foundation uh, to describe uh, what, w how we move forward. But I think it's going to be a useful piece of data as we, as we go. Um, there's the grants for the ecosystem development. There's a future trademark agreement with the company that will be very important in determining what gets called Zcash. Uh, and that's something that I think will have a very, very strong analog to that idea of two of two multi-sig. Uh, and then finally, uh, there are zip process improvements where we're going to be working diligently to take the product roadmap and feature uh, discussion that currently really happens behind closed doors and make it more open. Uh, so, uh, what's the point of talking about all this uh, in the context of the foundation and why, why am I speaking to you about it? Um, well, it's actually quite pres prescriptive. Uh, for people here that have projects that they're working on, you really should consider a US-based 501c3. Um, now look, I, I know that uh, we're all here to dismantle the government and that's great and all and all for it, but at the, in the meantime, I, I think it's important to recognize that we shouldn't dismiss hundreds of years of bureaucratic legal tradition that helps us understand how we can organize and, and reach consensus. I actually, like, uh, I, when I was hearing uh, Cory Doctorow's talk, uh, about law being an additional arrow in the quiver that we have. This is exactly the kind of mentality uh, we have, and he expressed it much more eloquently than I. Uh, so I want everyone to have that in the back of their mind uh, when they think about, uh, about how they should structure their projects. And, and just to get a little bit uh, in more detail about why public charities in particular are very, very uh, good for this, um, one is, as I mentioned, there's a long legal tradition. It removes some ambiguity, not in the technology that you're building, but certainly in uh, what sort of duties that your board might have and how you organize. Uh, two is that conflict of interest policies uh, obviously are not perfect, uh, but they are certainly uh, better than not having those transparency requirements. And in a 501c3, you're actually mandated to uh, you know, report when a board member recuses themselves from a discussion because of a conflict of interest, uh, at least we do in our bylaws. Um, and then there are plenty, there's just plenty of history of successful software and protocol-focused uh, 501c3s. Uh, obviously, the, the ones that come to mind are, are some folks that are here from the EFF and from the Internet Archive, uh, but there, there are many others. Um, uh, and, and also above and beyond that, like there are norms for nonprofit pay that mean that you're basically going to be self-selecting for people that are intrinsically motivated uh, for your mission. This is, working for a nonprofit is not a way to get rich, it's a way to change something that you want to see changed in the world. And lastly, and something that we are going to have to deal with after our Founders Reward Endowment runs out, uh, there's this concept of this public support test in public charities that's actually really, really powerful. Because uh, effectively what it mandates, and you don't have to read all that text, but it really means that you have to get a long tail of your donations um, from members, uh, from, from donations of individual donors, uh, uh, people that are interested in your mission and want you to succeed. And, and that basically demands that you, you have to listen to the people that you're trying to serve in whatever, whatever nonprofit you're in. So in order for us to remain a public charity, we have to do this. Uh, and I think it's uh, exactly the kind of accountability uh, that will help 
uh, other projects that are looking into, uh, you know, looking into trying to distribute power, uh, that this is one wonderful way to do it. Uh, but as mentioned, I don't know that bimodal power distribution is, ne is necessarily the goal. This is sort of an arbitrary view of how distributed power is for a given cryptocurrency. I think we all want to live in a world where, uh, where it's very clear that there is no central power structure that can, uh, that can dictate how we interact with the systems uh, that we're involved in, uh, whether it's payments or com computation or anything else. Uh, except for Doge, uh, the Doge pro Dogecoin protocol hasn't changed for like two years because it's perfect, and every Shiba that I've ever met is a self-sovereign Shiba, so. Thank you, yes. Finally, there we go. I knew something would get some chuckles. Uh, just one thing. Uh, so uh, the takeaway for uh, Ethereum uh, or projects building on Ethereum or anyone getting involved in, in cryptocurrencies, uh, I think there's this fascination with novelty in our space. And it's merited, right? Like we're building these new systems there kind of amazing, uh, everything that they've done is amazing, um, and I, I, it's, it's incredible that, that everything has, has blossomed and grown and it's a really wonderful space for experimentation. But don't, don't throw out um, all of this combined history uh, that, that can really help dictate uh, how, you, how you structure accountability and incentives in, uh, in, the, in the tools that you're building. And, and that's where there are all these tried and true governance models. Uh, and even though a lot of us are not big fans of uh, authoritarian states, uh, there are tools that these states provide to encourage the legal enforcement of some of these incentives, and it's worth exploring them. Um, and finally, uh, if you have to have centralization for speed's sake, I, I really believe uh, at, at the, the case, as is the case with Zcash, that what we're doing uh, to have a foundation as a counterbalance, as a focal point for other viewpoints, is, is something that is tremendously important and can be really powerful for eventually reaching that state where, yes, you can claim that you are decentralized. So, uh, thank you all very much. I blazed through that. Um, uh, I feel free if there are any questions, I'm, I'm happy to take them. Oh, it was just like legal fees, really. Um, so like ten or twenty thousand yeah. dollars. Hi. Um, can you talk a little more about how Zcash Foundation thinks about the distribution of power versus mm. resources? Mm. Because there's obviously we're in the blockchain space, and yeah. there's a tremendous amount of capital that's in the Zcash ecosystem. Mm -hmm. um, in to, what, to what role is the Zcash Foundation um, in charge of distributing that? Um, yeah. And, and, how, and, and how do you think about that versus power versus um, yeah. right and things like that? Yeah, that's a, so that's a great question. Uh, I think in large part, uh, the grant process is supposed to be a method for us to engage, particularly in that capital redistribution, um, where we have resources that we at the foundation are not allocating as effectively as members of the community might be, and we need to be able to find them and give them an opportunity to develop core pieces of infrastructure that can be a part of the Zcash ecosystem and hopefully also uh, help to distribute some of the power as a result. So a good example of that is um, we are going to be you know, funded in the past mobile wallets. Uh, and having a mobile wallet that is not controlled by a company or the foundation is a great way to add another piece of, distribu uh, you know, of, of, of distribution to, to the network, uh, of power distribution, rather. But a lot of them need capital, and that's what the grant process is really supposed to, supposed to help with. I have to admit, like in terms of being a little bit self-critical, uh, the current grant process is structured on, in such a way that it really mirrors like an academic style uh, grant grant committee, um, and as a result, the disbursement process is, is a little bit too slow. I think I'm okay with the idea of nonprofits acting uh, slower to, uh, to distribute those, uh, or just slower in general, but it's still a little bit too slow for us, and my hope is that uh, we're gonna be partnering with some folks to actually build uh, a more streamlined uh, grant, grant platform and bounty platform that'll help with that too. 
What about you know, like the the biggest revenue generator in the Zcash ecosystem is the founders reward, right? Right. Um, sure. And and is that going to be um, like that's obviously a governance question of how yeah. that founders reward gets distributed? Yeah. This ecosystem. Yeah. Um, and that's probably the most sustainable way to fund effort yeah. in on an in an ongoing basis. Yeah. And is there uh, is there anything like that where there's a sustainable model where the foundation can fund something um, through the community. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of that a lot of that depends on how. So if you're if you're building a project that has a founder's reward, you're uh, effectively engaging in a social contract with uh, miners and users that you are going to create a certain carve out for uh, for resources that should be dedicated to a, a given ecosystem. Um, and then the question becomes, well, how do you, you know, distribute them effectively? And to be honest, like the foundation, it was somewhat of a foregone conclusion on how the founders reward, reward would be distributed uh, because the foundation didn't exist uh, when that decision was made. Uh, but it was made as a result of, uh, in, in my view, uh, I, I think uh, people who were looking far ahead at what needed to happen to help distribute power, and uh, those individual recipients of the Founders Award uh, came together and said, we want to donate to create this foundation that's completely separate from the company. Uh, and, and it's a rather sizable amount of, of Zek. It's roughly 1.4% of, of Zcash that will ever be mined. Um, W you know the, the 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 full supply schedule will will go to the uh, foundation, and and so the onus is on us to coming up with a better method for uh, distributing those grants. Right now, we have a voluntary grant review committee. It's very academic. It's a little slow. Uh, my view is that there's a, a way to create more community involvement that will uh, not necessarily involve anything fancy like. Uh, on chain, but really just a platform that we run that enables people to fund projects they want to see with the possibility of getting foundation support later on. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Hello. Hi. Uh, great talk. Um, referring to the scale that you showed us, mm -hmm. I can't help but notice that the privacy protocols are a little bit more centralized. Yeah. Do you think there is a correlation between the degree of privacy and the degree of decentralization? Uh, maybe, but I actually would, uh, so th that's a great question, but I, I would reframe it not in terms of privacy, but in terms of cryptographic expertise necessary to execute a privacy coin. Because uh, truth be told, I mean, uh, doing, doing this stuff right is very, very difficult and very esoteric, and uh, it's hard to find the right people uh, to do it. And I, I mean, so many kudos to the Zcash company because it's one of the brightest, uh, group of cryptographers that I've, I've ever seen. Uh, and I think it's, it's very, very difficult to find people of that, of that caliber, but a lot of that is also an education problem. Uh, and it's something that we at the foundation are also somewhat tasked with trying to uh, open up uh, more opportunities for people to learn about these technologies so they can become contributors. But it's very, very difficult to contribute to, uh, to any sort of like, you know, snark development or ring signature development or, or grin or mimble wimble. It's like, it's just hard. And so it, it, that necessarily makes a smaller pool. And they're also younger projects. So uh, it, it, it takes time. Can you share a specific example of tension that was resolved using this bimodal governance? Uh, a specific example. Uh, I would say that there's, so I, I won't give a, I'll, I'll give a, a, a Specific a, enough example, is that better? Oh, I'm sorry? Specific enough example so you can mask it in ambiguity a bit? Yeah, yeah, helps. okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Uh, so. Um, there is a case where uh, um, I think the, comp the company and the foundation, uh, we were chatting about the possibility of distributing uh, Zcash to, uh, uh, to people in places that uh, are, are at risk. And, and I think it's a very important, important thing to do. Uh, and it's very critical that we figure out a way, a way to do it right. But there was a case where uh, really, um, the foundation didn't feel quite as comfortable doing it, and there was, as a result, lack of a joint effort on doing it that, that way. Um, I will say that there also, to bring a hypothetical future case up, let's say that in the future uh, that we have uh, a version of Zcash that's promoted by the company uh, that has uh, some degree of uh, a feature that is controversial, that some people in the community say they don't want. 
Um, and we hear that feedback and we, uh, on the foundation side, we collect it and we say we can't support this because uh, of this feedback in, in the uh, ecosystem at large. So in that case, it, it, when we have our future sort of trademark agreement, uh, there is this possibility where the company and the foundation will come together and we will try to figure out how to make that feature work. And if we can't, then effectively it's like nothing can move forward. Uh, that in that no, neither the foundation nor the company will be able to uh, enforce the trademark on whatever, whatever fork the company wanted to do. And then the main, you know, whatever uh, maintained non fork version would not be allowed to be called Zcash by trademark law. Now that, that trademark agreement uh, is something that we're still trying to put in place, but it's something that is, I think, very meaningful to determining how people view what is considered like the, the authentic chain going forward. Um, and that is like maybe not a very, uh, it might not be a, a very like satisfactory answer for a lot of people, but I think that there's uh, far more protection in going that route than just letting uh, the company, who again, I deeply admire and respect, but having any, any organization that has unilateral control over the direction of a protocol is, is just, it's, it's bad design. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Hello. Hi. Uh, so recently we've seen a bit license uh, approved exchange such as Gemini listing Zcash as one yeah. of their coins. And I have a question as if do you believe the company mm -hmm. structure of Zcash has mm -hmm. boosted in terms of regulation in terms of other privacy coins like Monero? Oh, do you th like that the company structure has helped other, other exactly. privacy? In terms yeah. of legal and regulation? Uh, absolutely. Because um, I think uh, particularly with uh, other privacy coin projects, uh, because of the lack of, of maybe a legal entity, uh, it's, it's very unusual. It's not like, um, it's not like you'll see uh, a Monero contributor uh, being invited to, uh, you know, to unfortunately actually, like I think there should be more of a, uh, more openness in exchanges being willing to talk to individual contributors. But I think it helps when you have some authority that you can point to and say, yes, these are the people that I go to to talk to about privacy coins because they are a company that's represented and I know how to deal with companies as an American company myself. On the, uh, I think it'll get trickier as the foundation and, and companies start to distribute more of that power, but um, part of our goal is to try and figure out how to delineate those things going forward. Uh, one more question, if you yeah. don't mind. Um, do, you, do you know if there are any very noticeable or significant downsides to choosing the company route for, mm -hmm. the, for Zcash? Uh, well, I mean, I think the, the big downside is really one that's purely of perception, I think. Um, like, I, I, again, in my interactions with everyone at the company, um, it, there is not a more, uh, I mean, Ethereum is actually pretty close, but there's not a more open and welcoming and kind group of people that are also just wicked smart. Um, and that, that is the company. But when you have a for-profit entity that is creating a uh, protocol that they knowingly want to be decentralized, it leads to uh, viewpoints and perspectives that uh, I, I think can be, can be difficult to try and argue against because of the kind of crypto anarchic roots of, of uh, all these systems that we're building. But my hope is that everything that we're doing on the foundation side will change that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Cool. Well, I think we've got a minute left and since there, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so how do you manage the um, conflicting goals of let's say, marketing something versus yeah. educating a community. Like, yeah. how do you bridge that gap? Because I've noticed some cryptocurrencies yeah. kind of jumped the shark a little bit, um, yeah. while some have invested heavily in community development and education. Yeah. Uh, so actually, I mean, it's, it, it's really, it, it's as clear as the way you frame the question, but the difficulty is deciding what's marketing and what's education, really. That's, that's ultimately what it is. And, and, and really what will wind up happening is, uh, right now, uh, there's very little interaction between the company and the foundation, but there's occasionally something comes up that says, oh, there's this opportunity to engage with this company on, on this thing. And, and effectively, it's up to my, you know, the foundation board, uh, a five-person board, uh, and, and me uh, as the executive director uh, representing the board to decide whether that falls in line with our mission to actually educate or if it's just 
uh, you know, marketing uh, or, or business development. Um, and so if we, if we basically disagree on approach, then the company can do what they independently want. And similarly, if, if the company disagrees with our approach on a particular partnership, like, that's fine, but we're going to go our way. Yeah. Cool. All right. And I'm done. Thank you all very much. Really appreciate your time. Thanks. <laughs>